Hello, and welcome to another episode of Coding Secrets. Today we'll be taking a look at the amazing particle system we wrote for Crash Bandicoot, Wrath of Cortex, and that we continue to use for many other PS2 and PS3 games. It used an incredible approach to processing and rendering particles using the VPUs on the PS2 to allow it to do very complex patterns of movement and colour, and no matter how complex the movement and colour changing became, it was no more costly to process. Today I'll be focusing on using the editor on the PS2 to show how flexible the system was. Pretty much every visual effect on Crash was produced using the particle system, from the obvious things like sparks and flames, to the less obvious such as fog and the crepuscular rays coming from these stained glass windows. I don't have a surviving build of Crash which has the particle editor enabled, so I'm using a build of a cancelled Madagascar game we were developing which still had the particle system in it. So let's take a look. Okay, so here we are as Melman, running around a test area we made for this uh, cancelled Madagascar game. Uh, you can see the beach here where they washed ashore in the first movie. And uh, so let's go into the particle editor, and you can see we've got a, a crosshair here which allows us to uh, place effects. So there's several effects lists, we'll just focus on the general one at the minute. You can see here there's some pre-made effects, so I'll go ahead and place a uh, flame down. And so we can see it's just that easy, you just place a flame where the crosshair is, the box shows you where it will be clipped, and you can move it around simply, and if you want you can zoom out and just drop a whole ton of flames down there in a big circle, and then you can just go straight to the game run around, there's the flames, so straight away you're getting feedback, you're seeing what their layout looks like. It's very useful for the artists and things just to, to place stuff in there so they can see how the scene will look. So let's go back in and delete these flames and let's uh, try layering a couple of different effects together. So we'll put a flame again and now this time let's put it, let's put it on top of this little totem pole, whatever it's called, there. And then let's grab uh, some heat haze. So you can see there the particles are being used again, a special mode called glass which distorts the, uh, the background image as well to give it that kind of heat haze effect. And then we'll grab some smoke, throw some smoke on and again drop straight into the game and there you go, straight away. You've got your flame there sat on top of where you placed it on the tiki head. You can save all these in the editor obviously um, as soon as you've placed them and you've got the diffractive kind of heat haze there distorting the background behind you. So pretty quick and easy to place effects in the level. Um, let's have another look at a smaller effect, this flame two here, which we'll just place. You can place two, you can zoom right in to get them very accurately placed if you need to pick them up, move them around. But what we'll do is we'll have a look at what exactly we can play with. So we're gonna take this flame and we're gonna change it into something completely different. So let's go through the basic options um, on this flame. So the data menu is just used for loading, saving, copying. We don't need to mess with that. Um, and there's a couple of technical things, but let's move on to color here. So you can see here, we can pick any color from this color table, pick some green for there, pick some purple for there, and then we can move exactly where that purple will start and end affecting. Uh, we can add another color there. Let's pick a kind of a yellow. And you can see that the particles now being affected starts off kind of reddish up through the purple and then to yellow. Uh, we can then make the particle the alpha channel, which is how solid the particle appears. We can play with that there. So I'm making it start off very transparent, very quickly become pretty solid, stay solid for most of its life and then fade back out again. And you can see it's a much thicker effect. And then uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna, you can change it to subtractive so if we're doing some sort of smoke effects, or modulative, and you can see there that it's kind of drawing a more obvious graphic. The, the original mode was additive, which adds to the colors that are already there, uh, whereas this mode um, draws more of the, uh, the textured graphic that you'll see later. So what I'm gonna do here is just make these colors a little more subdued, get rid of the purple, we kind of have green through kind of yellowy brown, and we'll go to the texture selector. Glass is what I was talking about before, we'll ignore that for now. And here you can see on the texture selector, it was originally a flame graphic. And using this, uh, we can, artists can load up different textures. We're gonna grab this leaf texture instead and use that for our particle. So you just pick it from the selector, and if we zoom in here, you can now see, as they clip as they hit the camera, that there's a leaf in there. So what we're gonna do is try and make um, falling leaves from a tree kind of an effect. 
So we'll go into what's called emitter settings next. Um, emitter velocity is how fast these particles are shot out in a given direction. So here they're being shot up in the air and we can rotate the emitter if we need to. So for doing things like water or hose pipes, things like that, very useful. And the programs in the game can move the direction the emitters flow. So for doing flamethrowers, things like that, it's great. Um, but for now we'll kill that. And we'll go to um, gravity. And you can see here that the particles now fall under gravity. They can fall upwards if you go negative gravity. And again, pretty useful effect when you're doing uh, flames upwards, um, water downwards. So we'll just do a little bit of gravity there. And then we can dictate exactly where these particles start in a given um, cube-ish shape. So you can see there we've, we've made this a little bit bigger. You can see these particles are being emitted around a cube. You can rotate that cube. I'm saying cube, it's a distorted cube. But it's a volume that allows us to place uh, effects uh, in a more random position. You can see here, I can then give them random movement. Once they're emitted, they can then slide sideways, forwards, up and down in the three axes. But the effect we're going for, we can, we can just give it just a slight amount of X and Z movement, just to give them a little bit of, like they were being blown in the wind kind of a look. Okay, so then we can knock down the number of particles a second. We don't need that many leaves. So if we cut it down to sort of two or three, maybe we'll try one first because leaves don't fall off trees that quickly. And then we'll increase the life so that they last longer, so they can reach the ground. So let's just add maybe a couple more. And there you go. So you've got a couple of sort of floaty leaves dropping down there, which is okay, you know, pretty basic effect, but there's more we can, we can play around with. So the particle size here. So in here, white means biggest and black means smallest. And so these can dictate, so here it starts black, which is small, then becomes white quite quickly, stays white for the whole time, and then shrinks down very quickly at the end. And so you can see that that shaded graph there dictated how they would um, scale. So then we can do the same with rotation. Similar thing, we have black through white. So white being the top number, sorry, black being the top number, white being the bottom one. If we set the top one to zero, the bottom one to 720, then that will tell it how much to rotate during its life. So if we have a look at that now, we can see that the leaf is spinning on its way down even better, but then we can go back to the sizes and play with the height. And if we go into height and add a few more points on this sort of color graph here, we can say start small, then go big, then small, then big, then small, in just the height. And so with the rotation, you can now see that the leaves have kind of a thickness to them. They look like they're flat and they're falling and they're more like a leaf. So we've kind of got a 3D effect just by playing with 2D coordinates. So let's go ahead and place that in a tree and then let's uh, make sure we're happy with how they fall and make sure that they reach the ground. They look like they're coming up a little short. So I'll just tweak the life a little bit more. Pop into the menu particle life. Just la last another second. And there we go. And so there's the particles falling. You got a nice kind of lively looking tree. And that's only using eight particles to do that entire effect um, of these leaves falling out of a tree. And we'd probably get, get away with less if we wanted to. So as Melman gathers around, let's just show what adding more particles can do. So let's take this shape, let's um, rotate it around, let's, let's scale this up. Let's take the emitter and let's just scale it much, much bigger. So let's make it cover pretty much the whole area we're gonna run around. So again, this is just telling it whereabouts to randomly add these particles. Okay, so we'll move that. So it's about the area we're running around. And now instead of emitting them, uh, let's just check that they reach the floor as they, yep, yeah, as they fall. And we're not wasting lots hidden underneath the floor. And let's just increase the rate at which we emit these particles. So we're just gonna emit loads more of them. Now, if we hit 1,024 for a given particle, that's as, as a, a, a given placement. That's as many as it will, it will generate. So there's 1,024. But we can instance that and add many, many more on top of it. So we can just place more and more and more of these down. And you can see it's just adding thousands and thousands and thousands of particles. And this isn't slowing it down. They're all processing. And we go back to the gameplay. And there we go. Crazy leaf rain, snow, 
stuff <laughs> running around the place. So again, all, all nicely clipping, they're all rotating, they've all got their own color changing going on, it's all being processed on the, on the PS2. Uh, and there you go. So that's a quick look at what we can do. That, that was a flame five minutes ago, and now it's a storm of leaves. So uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's fun. So I hope you enjoyed that quick look at the most basic features of the particle editor. It's capable of many more complex things, such as collisions, bouncing particles, different shaped emitters for spherical volumes, or even star shapes. I could do follow-up videos to show how specific effects like the stained glass windows were achieved, or a video to explain just how we program the VPUs to give us such a fast system. Let me know in the comments what you'd like to see, and as always, please like or subscribe if you enjoyed this video. Until next time, bye-bye.